Hello and welcome to another episode of Bike Radar Diaries, which is all about what we like to get up to here at Bike Radar. And, as you can see, young Jack here is back from his travels. Yes, I've been sunning myself in Australia at the Tour Down Under, where I saw lots of new and really exciting road tech for the season ahead. And you can check out more on that with links in the description below. This week, with winter in full swing in the Northern Hemisphere, Jack and I thought it'd be a good idea to do a winter bike versus. I have my relatively new Fairlight Seikan? Seikan? Seikan. And I have my All City Mr. Pink, which I think might honestly be one of my favourite bikes I've ever ridden. And I've already sung the praises of that bike in a previous video, and again, check the link in the description for that one. Just like our previous Diaries Versus, which was all about our hill climb bikes, we're going to go over each winter bike in detail. Things like the specs, what makes them good, what makes them bad, and why they're good for winter riding. And then, just as with the last video, we want you to vote and tell us which is your favourite. And just as with the previous video, the loser has got a painful forfeit, which I can absolutely assure you will be unpleasant, but we can't give you too much on that just yet. So, we're going to put up a community poll post at the same time this video goes live, and then you can cast your votes. Vote for me. So let's get to the bikes. Joe, I'm going to let you put your case forward to say why you think your winter bike is superior to mine. I really like my winter bike, my Fairlight Seacan. For starters, it's made from glorious Reynolds steel, nice and comfortable. I like the colour of it, nice kind of battleship grey finish with purple accents. But more importantly, it has everything I think a winter bike needs. So we're talking big tyres, proper mud guards, fully externally routed cables, an external bottom bracket and disc brakes. Whereas your all city? is largely similar. So again, I have mud guards, relatively big tyres, nice easy gearing, externally routed cables, all that lovely things, but it has rim brakes, which is a controversial choice for a winter road bike because nobody, absolutely nobody, is going to say that rim brakes are stronger than disc brakes. However, I think they present a few advantages for winter riding, namely in terms of ease of living with them, ease of maintenance, and I think they're just far less likely to get contaminated than disc brakes, which, if you live here, spend a lot of time washing your bikes and contaminating disc pads and rotors is a very regular occurrence. Yeah, that's kind of true. Um, your rim brakes are fairly easy to live with if you've got to adjust the cable tension or change the pads, that doesn't take too long. One thing you'll notice from the pack shops of these bikes is we've left them dirty in their original condition, and you can see on the back of Jack's frame his rim brakes have made it very dirty, so there's a lot of muck and grime coming off, which obviously you don't get with disc brakes. The reason why I think disc brakes are better, yes, they do need a bit more kind of faff and time if you want to bleed them or kind of change the pads and stuff like that, but the power and modulation on offer is just so good. The Fairlight is the first road bike I've ridden a lot which has disc brakes, and it's been a real kind of eye-opening experience for me, just how good they are, how easy they are when you're doing kind of long, mucky descents in the wet and stuff like that. Yeah, they're just really nice to use. It's just one finger modulation, which is it's pretty good. But you just can't beat the feel of rim brakes. <laughs> they're so traditional. Yeah. <laughs> so in terms of brakes, it's still a controversial subject, and I think we can safely say that was a, a draw, depending on what you're after on your winter bike. So it's Saturday, and uh, on Friday at work, I asked Jack, because he was working from home, do you need any more tyres, some better tyres? So I knew he had probably inappropriate tyres for winter riding. And he was like, no, no, I'm fine. So I was thinking, oh, we'll probably get a puncher. I wonder how many. We're already on puncher number one. <laughs> he's, actually, he's actually a bit annoyed. I blame no one but myself, Joe. So let's move on to tyres. Joe, I think you've got some Panaracer Pasalas and a 38mm wide fit. Yeah, they're really nice. The first time I've used them, Jack has used them before. You've been equally as impressed with them. They've got quite a kind of supple sidewall, but there's still plenty of um, protection on the top for obviously winter riding and all the muck and grime on the roads and stuff like that. Yeah, you can run them at nice low pressures, nice and wide. They've been really good. This is one where I think you may have missed the boat a bit with your tyres because you've got some slightly narrower and less puncher proof tyres. Yes, I have Challenge's Paris-Roubaix tyres, which are wonderful, wonderful summer tyres. <laughs> but they are not good winter tyres. And although they are pretty grippy still in the wet and everything, they have no puncture protection. So I think it's been every ride, probably every ride that we've been on, that we've had a puncture. But my rims are actually tubeless ready, so maybe I'll swap them out soon. But I think it's safe to say for this one, 
you win. Yeah, I win, and every time we go out riding on those bikes, I have quite a little bet to myself with, I wonder how long it'll be before before we have to stop and fix Jack's puncher. But it's always, it's always good fun watching him do it. I never help him. <laughs> Try that. Next up, we're going to talk about finishing kits. That's things like your bars, stem, seat post, and saddle. Now, Jack, you have a really nice finishing kit on your bike. Yeah, I've got Thompson's Elite Finishing Kit, and you cannot fault it. In terms of reliability, in particular things like the head of the seat post, it is just so solid, and that little two-bolt arrangement is really easy to uh, adjust. But one thing in particular highlight for me is the Brooks Cambium C15 saddle. This is a totally new one on me and I really like it. It's not a shape I would assume would work for me normally. I normally actually prefer saddles with a cutout, but yeah, suits the bike and it suits me. So thumbs up for me there. Yeah, I'm slightly envious of uh, Jack's finishing kit. On mine, it's mostly FSA and then I've got a fabric saddle. Saddle doesn't quite suit me for whatever reason, so I get a bit uncomfortable with it sometimes, but obviously I could change that. Um, the other issue I had was with the bars, which are very narrow and kind of tilt in like that. So the, the drops feel really good because they kind of splay out. But yeah, the tops feel fairly narrow. Obviously with Fairlights, I could spec a different bar, but that's what they came with. So yeah, I think finishing kit wise, I'd like a slightly wider bar with a more kind of traditional straight drop and hoods. And yeah, if I wanted a different saddle, I'd definitely choose something like the Brooks, which Jack has on his bike. Have a go. You may have also noticed from some of the GoPro and the pack shots that poor Jack's top cap is missing. This is not my fault, and I knew someone would comment into it's why we're talking about it, but it was actually Joseph. Just before his recent race in Lanzarote, realised he needed one and he borrowed it. And we're such a, a collaborative team, I willingly obliged. So there is a reason for it. Yet yeah, his top cap is on my mountain bike at the minute and I am uh, yet to give it back to him even though I was like, yeah, I'll give it you back straight away. It still hasn't happened. It's quite a nice top cap. He's <laughs> pinching my hand. I broke my elbow two years ago when a goose flew out in front of me and I fell over, so this is me redeeming myself. <laughs> <laughs> now on something every good wind spike needs, and that's light. My Fairlight had a set of Hunt Super Dura Dynamo wheels, whereas the All City... Yeah, it's got a set of Halo's own Dynamo wheels, so these are built on an SP hub with Halo's own rims, and these power an Exposure Revo light. What was quite interesting about this is your light uses a more shaped beam, whereas my Exposure Revo is more of like a broad spread. It's more designed for like your gravelly off-road riding. Now, riding in the kind of lanes that we do, a shaped beam is very good for seeing where you're going, but visibility is also a concern. And we kind of reckon that the exposure with that more broad spread is perhaps better for that, so. Yeah, I agree. Um, my light's really nice, but I think yours is more powerful. Just when we've been riding around, if I kind of look back and see Jack over my shoulder, it definitely, you can really see his light shining out. Um, for commuting and stuff like that, the light on my bike works really well because it's not blinding anyone when you're riding about and it's not blinding cars. But I think if you were going out, obviously in winter, kind of training after work or riding early in the morning and commuting when it's really dark, I prefer the more powerful beam which comes on the exposure. But they are both really good lights on nice nice wheels as well. Yeah, and which is, should say that, you know, I really love Dynamo wheels. It's your kind of first uh, foray into it, but really for a winter bike, the knowing you can just get on the bike and not have to stress about charging batteries is a real plus in both cases. Yeah, highly recommended Dynamo Lights. Because I'm on an old school steel bike, I feel like I'm in the 80s, so I'm going to do an impression of a pro road cyclist from the 80s. Yeah. Give me marks out of 10. Okay. Oh, that's it. Yeah, that's more like it. Sitting on the saddle back far enough though. Yeah, that's good actually. Very old school. Great form. Ruben's like a cyclist from the uh, 20s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we're on to gearing. Granted, my groove set is a bit more premium being all Tegra, but we're more interested in the ratios. So on my bike, I have a 50-34 on the front and a 11-34 on the back, so pretty good. What did your bike have? 
So my bikes are kind of an interesting mix of 105 and then I've got these White Industries VBC cranks up front. And on that, I have a 4832 combo. So a little bit smaller than Joe's, but what's quite interesting about my cranks is the outer chainring essentially has these slotted bits in where you can fit any chainring of any size you want on the inner. So although I have a 32 on there at the minute, I could drop down as low as a 26 if I fancy climbing some walls. And on the back, I've got an 1128. So although I'm getting quite similar ratios to Joe, I'm getting those with a much smaller gap. And I really like that. And that is personal preference over anything else. Yeah, Jack definitely has a kind of wider spread of gearing and more options in terms of his ratios. I think somewhere where my gearing or my group set slightly wins out is that I have a clutch on the rear mech. So my gears and the bike is just so quiet. I think we both commented on that when we were out riding that with that clutch, which holds the chain a bit more taut and stops the chain rattle, even when you're in kind of a, the small ring. Yeah, that felt really nice. Uh, so I think maybe Jack's crank with the Ultegra <laughs> clutch would be a, a great compromise, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think so. The, it, we cannot stress, it is so quiet, that bike. You know, you've got the big damp tires, that clutch. Very nice, very cool. Mudguards, another staple of any winter bike. Um, I think Jack is gonna have to win hands down here because while my SKS on my bike, they're very nice, um, you had a set of really nice aluminium ones that I was slightly envious of. Yeah, Velo Orange's alloy mudguards, I've used them twice now, and they're, they're ever so slightly more expensive than SKS, but if you set them up well, they are completely silent, they're really sturdy, and in my experience, they last much longer than those chrome plastic mudguards. So I'm going to say arrogantly, yes, I win here. <laughs> and I'd agree. <laughs> Here we are, another day, another dollar. You're in full PR kit, full branded kit, which is a, is a rarity for you. You're not very corporate today. Yeah, yeah, not 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 expressing yourself through the medium of fashion. <laughs> We're off for another winter ride. Yes, lovely little morning ride before school. You're on your old city. I'm on my old city. You're on your Fairlight. Nice Fairlight. We've also got an, a hanger on. Hanger on. Can't get him out of the kit. That's Reuben former member of the bike radar team still his kit jack will be taking that back at the end of the day yep. yeah yeah <laughs> Bur ceremonial burning and yeah we're burning it before sending reuben out to sea should we go for a bike ride yes yes one thing i'd like to add is that both of these bikes are almost 100 percent externally rooted i think my front brake goes through the fork and your rear brake goes through the top tube so not quite 100 percent but yeah that's really good, isn't it? Oh yeah, I mean, if you do any of your own maintenance on your bikes, you'll know that internal routing is a nightmare, but internal routing after your bike is covered in months and months worth of winter grime is a miserable experience. And truth be told, I would rather have external cables on all of my bikes, be it winter or summer. So yes, big boon there for us. And external bottom brackets as well. Yes, a threaded bottom bracket is a must, I think, for a winter bike, because it's just unscrew it and screw another one back in. No faffing, and that is great. Way. Thanks Fairlight and All City for specking <laughs> your bikes with externally rooted cables. Thinking of the people. Finally, as I've got a disc bike, obviously I'm gonna have through axles, whereas Jack has relatively standard quick release skewers. Now both kind of have their benefits, don't they? Yeah, I've got these kind of funky DT Swiss style quick releases, the ones that are kind of like a lever you can pull out, tighten up as you like, and I really like those. I think they make a, it's a slight difference to kind of uh, wheel security and stiffness, but I mean, I'd be pretty annoyed if I had a disc bike without through axles, so we'll call that one a draw. Yeah, obviously the only issue with through axles is that if you want to remove the wheel, you're going to have to get your multi-tool out and kind of fill around with it and stuff like that. But yeah, apart from that, they are great. So those were our winter bikes, but now it's up to you guys to vote which one you think is the best. And as we've already said, the loser is going to have to do a forfeit. We can't give you much more details at the moment, but it's probably going to involve us being in quite a bit of pain and possibly semi-naked as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so get your votes in. There's a community poll up right now and let us know which is your favourite and we'll get back to you as soon as we can about said unpleasant forfeit. And as always, if you have any questions for us on our winter bikes or anything else for that matter, let us know in the comments and don't forget to like or subscribe. Bye! Bye. Vote for me! Bye for me! Bye. Bye. <laughs>